Thank you. And the next uh, talk will be given by uh, Burkhard Wolf. Um, Burkhard has pre-recorded um, the talk. So if you unshare, Walter, then I can... Ah, uh, yeah. Where is it? It should be at the top center. I think I have clicked off the whole thing. What happens if I join again? Uh -huh. um, I, I can stop your video. Yeah, please uh, stop it because I I managed to click oh, no, off so it, it was the window the wrong. and I cannot do it immediately. Please. That one. Ah, here is it again. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, so, um, hello, thank you for letting me speak here at the Isabel workshop and present this particular work on Isabel C, which is, has been done by Frederick Tuong and myself. I will start with in my overview to discuss a bit the general problem of code verification and ask the heretic question, is this actually a solved problem? Um, I will continue with a discussion uh, on introduction, the idea of using Isabel as a code verification framework since it has actually a lot of features which are necessary for this. So there is nowadays a very nice and powerful IDE called PIDE. They a generic front end which allows to do all sorts of uh, generic annotations. And there's a wealth of libraries of uh, semantic theories over uh, um, programs which can be reused for this particular purpose. And I will finish uh, and interweave this particular uh, presentation here with um, a demonstration of two semantic backends. Um, which um, we have been working on. Um, let's focus to the first point. So code verification, is it a solved problem? Um, annotation, annotating programming code with pre post condition and all sorts of specification constructs is a very popular formal method. For some it's, uh, well, the real thing. So annotations were inserted into the program source and via a verification condition generator uh, based on a WP calculus of Dijkstra extracts um, more or less uh, automatically uh, verification conditions, which can then be uh, more or less automatically treated by, an, by a constraint solver. A typical example is Framacy which uh, looks, uh, has a code like this. So here in the core, you have a linear search procedure, uh, you have the contracts elements before, and you have uh, the invariants and the variants um, uh, at the place where you need actually specific semantic information about what the loop. If you look a bit more closely, you will see that this code, this additional specification code has constructs to keep to talk about memory, to talk about framing conditions, to talk a particular logic, and uh, also the um, underlying methods. So why are you talking about partial correctness or to total correctness? All this is covered inside this particular uh, side language. If you look at an alternative verification condition generator for C, then such as, for example, VCC3, you will see a different kind of setting, a different kind of annotation language that handles uh, these kind of things. Here you have objects, you have um, a particular property model, you have uh, a treatment of concurrency, etc., etc. The point is, if it comes to real programming languages, VCGs make a lot of assumptions over the language fragment, the treatment of the underspecification, in case of C, this is quite dramatic. Uh, the execution model, so is this sequential or concurrent? The data types concerning arithmetics and the memory model, memory layout, and even the architecture model, which is underlying this particular language. All these assumptions were kept 
either explicit, either implicit in the verification condition generation algorithm or explicit in some background theory. I, I have worked actually on one of these for VCC1, one of the first versions, and that was about 300 axioms and actually it was not very complicated to prove uh, that these axioms were inconsistent. Most existing tools like step, steps, Daphne, SAL annotations, Y, etc. follow this axiomatic approach. And an alternative uh, solution would be using logical embeddings and an interactive theorem prover like Coco Isabel. This paves the way for a derived verification generator, for a derived but guaranteed consistent memory model and clear management of the involved logical context. Still, uh, this does not guarantee that uh, this particular model meets the reality, but that's a very fundamental problem that we have all over in uh, computer science. Now, what are the particular advantages for in choosing Isabel or the Isabel platform for building um, a front end for C or for programming language in general. Um, Isabel has a generic front end um, and uh, we can build a generic front end which uh, is an infrastructure for C semantics in Isabel Hall. And uh, for that we reuse uh, Isabel as a system framework that offers an IDE, a nice IDE. Um, offering a particular document model that is basically an asynchronous graphs uh, consisting of documents, mostly uh, documents having commands, and a front-end technology which is asynchronous, is, which is sitting on top of this particular document model and allows to exploit its inher inherent structure for uh, optimized um, user support. Um, there are several formally proven consistent semantic backends already in the Isabel literature, so in the AFB. Um, and there are mechanisms to define semantic annotations which were interpreted, can be interpreted backend specific, so by the semantic interpretation of a particular C fragment. Generic front end code can um, create different applications uh, which were based on symbolic execution, which could be used for symbolic execution, test generation, or interactive and automated proofs. Um, now I come to the heart of our solution. So we introduced a new set of commands, and the most notably the new command C inside PDM. So this looks like this. Uh, you have here uh, a C command and inside this uh, text, which uh, is in an IDE-like fashion, immediately interpreted, passed, annotated um, by colorations, etc. This is fully editable. Uh, it is, allows navigation in this particular source. It supports C11 syntax. And um, a particular feature which I'm talking about is um, it allows to define generic programmable code annotations. Here I start a demo. Not now. <laughs> With respect to the backends, um, we have at the moment the following choices. So there is, of course, simple and imp, um, which are a bit more older. There's the recent and very nice IMP2 by Peter Lamich. Uh, there's Orca um, by Jakub Nemoshi. And there's Celine uh, for white box testing, um, which I will briefly present here or use here. And there is, of course, Autocarus um, by uh, the NICTA group, uh, which was basically introduced and presented around 2014. Um, This semantic backend is a particularly realistic C model for operating system code verification and has been used in the CELL4 project. It has a decent degree of automation, but is of course also very complex. Um, I will just present how we made Isabel C, just on a slide. 
it is based on um, compiler generators. So it is um, not, it adds a new parsing technology to the well-known inner syntax early parser for Lambda terms and the combinator parsing library, which is used for uh, commands. Um, nevertheless, we had been able to provide it with efficient parsing and intelligence, and it offers also a generic scope analysis. So there is a C environment uh, which is kept and which um, gives a certain infrastructure when programming um, code annotations. Um, it is reasonably sufficient, so it passes the entire cell for sources. These are 26 kilo, um, kilo locks in one second and produces the markup for that in about 20 seconds. How does this work to add a semantic interpretation based on this front end, which internally generates, of course, an abstract syntax tree, actually different versions of it. So um, before we see that, we probably have to look into a few problems. So if you see what annotations do, you have, of course, the problem already of ambiguity. So if you have here a for loop, for example, with some annotation afterwards, the question is, is this referring to the I, to the multiplication, to the assignment, or to the entire statement? Um, in practice, if we want to have a generic approach, we need to have some kind of format flexibility. So uh, the annotations of this particular format, so you have some kind of a begin and an end. Um, you have uh, references uh, to the syntactic C context. So you have an assertion and inside a formula and the variables inside there are actually reference reference actually to C variables which are in the syntactic context around it. And you have uh, transformations of the logical context. So for example, this is fully legal code. You can have inside the C code um, a definition which produces a C definition, which produces a whole definition, which uh, allows you to have an annotation commands which accidentally is called lemma. And this annotation command lets you have inside the C source actually a proof that makes reference to this particular piece of definition that has already been made. You want that the um, maximally representable number and the integers is actually the square of this constant minus one. So you use here, you make it explicitly in the C source a reference to the underlying memory model and check that a particular assumption over the code is actually justified. You can do that in Isabel C. And well, if you look closely to that, uh, here we have a linear order between the definition, but um, in general, you will need a kind of generic mechanism um, that changes the evaluation order. Um, how does this work? Uh, adding an annotation command. Well, the general mechanism is pretty similar to uh, what is in Isabel's on the, Isa, the outer syntax command. So this is essentially um, a function that takes a keyword, um, takes a parser, which yields as value a system, translation, system transition. So it transforms a logical context into another one. You give it a logical context and the entire construction will produce you the logical context that you want to have. And uh, this is the way in which you can do and set up command in Isabel, Isar. And analogously, we provided commands that follow this particular structure. So we have annot C annotation commands in Isabel C, which take an annotation uh, keyword and uh, allows you to have, well, a navigation expression, which I'm going to explain later on. Uh, you will have, again, this particular parser, which must be now a C parser, so it must be um, built about the C lexical uh, um, structure. And um, depending on the variant you are using, it has either effect or it's actually a transformation on the logical context. Sigma here, as I mentioned, is the logical context of the Isabel system. This 
is a slight simplification. Actually, there's another parameter here uh, floating around, which is the Isabel C environment, which contains the stack of shift reduced uh, abstract syntax trees, which were available at a particular point in the source. Um, let's have a look how this looks like. So you can here have in C now an annotation. So this ampersand at the beginning is the symbol for now starts an annotation. You have here some kind of invariant and there is a command which we call highlight. We found it relatively useful uh, to see what kind of um, syntactic site content is actually um, in the focus of this particular command. If you change with this path expression here, the syntactic context, you see that highlight is referring to another expression and um, you can shift around uh, this way annotations and make them refer to a particular path in this in the C source. Um, moreover, there's a way with particular operations here to um, organize the uh, execution order of annotation commands in a particular way. So this means that this is used at the downward process of the parsing, while this means that this is on the bottom-up phase when the passing past tree is con constructed. And this it's, it's, a, it's a nice exercise for the reader to fiddle out what is actually the precise execution order of this particular annotations here. Um, I present uh, an example language, which we call CLean. Um, it's built on a shallow embedding uh, into uh, state exception monads. It's a manipulistic language with skip, sequence, if C and while C, so similar to imp, but it offers uh, C-like operation control operators uh, for breaks and return, which is based on an implicit global uh, uh, control variables. Um, local variables are possible in procedures and they are represented as stacks of global variables. So, so. Um, and the entire construction is um, persistent or consistent with um, uh, the possibility to have direct recursion calls in ceiling. Um, an example, uh, here you have a C source, um, which uh, consists of a small um, primality checker. Uh, you have here the annotation commands, which were use, referencing um, to uh, the definitions before. Here's the code. And um, what you see here is this uh, fat C as actually uses the phenomenon that Isabel C uh, or Isabel uh, supports cascade syntax, a feature that was a long dream in systems like Centaur or so, and here it comes to reality. So if you click on this particular N inside, it will actually refer to this particular N here. Uh, and this particular N here and um, make the uh, referencing consistent with uh, what you can represent in the IDE. Um, this command will, in the semantic interpretation of the abstract syntax, which is generated by Isabel C, construct a definition for prime hole in the monadic language, um, a definition for the square root um, here, um, definitions for the pre and post conditions and um, prime C as a monadic representation. This looks like um, all this as definitions in the logical context sigma. And this looks finally like this. Here you see just the core, um, which is here your if then else. You can recognize the while, uh, the while if then else. Uh, this is the update. Here, this had been a local variable, so we make reference to the stack um, in the site which I lives at that particular point, and we have a return construction. You um, refer to this particular core code 
by having the block structure exp made explicit. So on this is there's a combinator from the Xilin library that um, tells you, okay, you open the block, you push the local variables inside, you execute this particular code, and you close the scope of the local variable. And over this particular type of program, you can present and prove in our triple um, the correctness of this particular program. This is more or less the same idea, so only that's much, much simpler, but also much less powerful uh, than Isabel C. Autochorus. Uh, there the syntax would look like this, and we can continue with the demo um, for this particular kind of code. So oh, this is the demo that I could... Let me conclude. Uh, you want to do the... No, no, just make this last slide and then I uh, take over for the demo. So I presented Isabel C, which is a generic front-end general IDE support. Generic in the generic tradition of Isabel itself, which was designed to be a generic environment for logics and becomes more and more a generic environment for all sorts of formal methods based on higher order logic. I presented a technology that can be applied to other parsers. So we have actually the same parsing generation principles for a C18 um, front end which is already experimentally available but we could you apply this entire um, generation script for javascript or something like rust it follows the idea of having isabel as an eclipse for formal methods and uh, which puts forward the idea that we have an integrated document in which a continuous build is a central feature of the checking and not some kind of outside tool supported thing thingy that you have to support with some 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 make files and which is usually a mess and finally at the end of a project typically given up it is instantiable with various semantic interpretations of c uh, based on derived principles in uh, and uh, using the underlying develop libraries in whole. It is a platform for verification backends and test and proof. So you can use this for C code, proving, testing, analyzing this kind of code. And it is profits very much from this strong uh, mechanism for plugin separation. So for uh, Visual Studio Code, for example. It's not so sure that if you add a new plugin and actually it doesn't influence the state of another plugin. Here, this is based on very clean um, separation principles fundamentally in the core of Isabel that allow you to separate um, logical and technical issues of different plugins. Thank you very much and I'm open for your questions. All right, so um, over to Borkard with demo. So how does this work? Cancel uh, spotlight, whether uh, I share the screen. Yep. So, but, uh, I put, oops, Allah. This is, this is, this is, this is. I don't know if this works. Uh, this is what I was Zoom always on <laughs> has its little problems. Uh, so share the screen one thing and share at a time. Mm. Is a bit unknown. Mm, I'll try to see, click here, click there. So, unfortunately, it doesn't let me leave that to do that. 
Can you see anything? No. Uh, grant access and uh, zoom. Ah, there's another button. I'm not sure that this works. That's why I wonder that you actually show uh, this particular video. Okay. Still doesn't work. No. Yeah. You seem to have some weird, very weird. Oh, now we see something. Oh, cool. Okay, so this is the C fragment of some uh, program. Actually, what I'm showing here is the backend. Uh, I'm using the backend of uh, Autochorus. So what you hear is, uh, is a quite standard C source with the usual interactive features like, well, you can see that this is bound to this variable and the usual IDE features with markup, with editing. If you, if you edit, it's fairly reactive. So you um, can actually um, edit and modify and um, uh, keep a, a very, very substantial sources. So uh, the last thing that um, Frederick was checking was the Hermit kernel, which is about 158 thousand kilo lines of code so uh, okay Boko seems to be frozen at least for me. Yeah, for me too. Yep. I'm here. All right. Um, so, Burko seems seem to have dropped off. Um, Let's wait for a few seconds whether he rejoins. Well, doesn't look like it. Well, so I think I'll hand over back to the workshop organizers. Um, let's thank the speakers again. And thank you to Tobias, Macarius, and Larry for organizing.